how do you see the future for you? Future? No future. I don't think of future because I live only for this time. Especially in Lebanon, we don't have future. You don't know. Let's talk about Lebanon. Corruption and is unable to care for its people. Half the population living below the poverty line. <laughs> This is different from any other crisis that this country has witnessed. People all around me, they're all gone. The highest number of refugees per capita. The government is calling for refugees to leave the country. 80% of the Lebanese population is also in poverty after the collapse. You are not supposed to speak. They're losing everyday money. Bullet holes. How's life in the refugee camp? If I will die, I will die. So welcome back to another day here in Beirut. Today I want to show you more stories with people, but I want to show you also the contrast. You see on one side, very rich neighborhoods, very rich areas, very rich people. And on the other side, everything damaged, everything destroyed. A result of the explosion in 2020. But this is all in the same area. As we are getting now closer to the port, we can see more and more buildings affected. For example, that one, the whole building with no windows, the contrast. This building completely damaged, shattered windows. And this building here, completely new, just across the street. This is the contrast that I was talking about. You see this in a lot of different places, actually. This car here, a BMW, ever since explosion, nobody claimed ownership, no doors, no windows. Nobody knows who the owner is. Basically, this is one of the oldest palaces here in a street full of palaces and mansions. During the explosion, there's one person who owned this palace who got affected by it. She survived for a few days and she died. Lady Yvonne Cochran. And you might be wondering, the sons of that lady, where they are living? They are living in a small hammam over there. You know the Ottoman hammams? So they have a hammam which turned into a house of their own. One of the richest families, so. <laughs> the roof is not so stable, so anything could happen, anything could fall. That thin layer is kind of protecting everyone walking around that area. You can really see the impact, particularly when you look at the ceiling. Everyone, to a certain extent, was affected. Honestly, you don't need to walk far. Beirut is a city of stories. 50 meters, 100 meters, there's a new story. There's a new person impacted by the blast, by the pandemic, inflation, the whole economical problem that the whole country is facing. I think it's important to keep engaging with people. <laughs> We're gonna have lunch in this place called Le Chef. We're gonna talk now also with the son of the owner, who is the chef, Le Chef, um, to understand a little bit what happened here and maybe meet some of the people cooking and helping in the kitchen. It's very exciting because it's one of those places affected as well. By, by the explosion and there's an interesting story here with an actor uh, and the way back to be in operation. Welcome to Lebanon. Are you from where? Argentina. Argentina. Oh, I have too much friends in Argentina now. Oh, yeah? Oh. Para. Para, nice to meet you. No. From Syria. Lebanon? Syria. Syria. Syria, no. Syria, nice. Hamido. Hamido. From Lebanon or Syria? Uh, Syria. Uh, Nasir, Benigladesh. Nasir from where? Benigladesh. I heard this place was uh, affected during the explosion yeah. in 2020, right? No. Yeah. All broke. All broke. All broke. All broke. All broke. Nobody. During the explosion, they were deeply affected. It was, it was broke, destroyed. Russell Crowe, the actor, was doing some fundraising campaign and now it's fully in operation. You grab the bread like this. This is the hummus. It's kind of right. Then you close it. I'm done with it. So, like in many countries in the Middle East, you use your hands. You grab whatever you need, your hummus, your potatoes and stuff, and then you eat. There's no need actually to have a fork. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're paying cash and paying how much? Seven dollars. If I were to pay with my credit card? It's Fifty dollars in uh, official. We are trying to see if we can get closer to the port. The glass here is shattered on the floor. The 
us. We are literally facing the board, facing the silos, preventing this from spreading much more. This used to be a restaurant. The kitchen is completely smashed. The ceiling doesn't look very stable. The walls are not very stable. Can you really imagine? Literally the day of the explosion. The people working here. This was like a restaurant and a hotel at the same time. Look at the mirror. Just imagine the people eating here on that day or sleeping here on that day. Look at the bathrooms. The lighter over there, yeah. cones from people, all the shattered glass, the wall, even a pair of jeans. Okay, last thing will be the rooftop. can't forget what happened. My friend and I planning to discover a building that was facing the port. My boss called me and opening my laptop, so I will not come. Around 6, 7, 6, 8 p.m. We felt like a earthquake for seven seconds. The building like was doing dancing. And we felt wind very hot. I was about to hit under my bed. We saw a very big pink smoke in the sky. So I took the photo and posted on uh, Facebook asking what happened. The news started to circulate. People said that uh, the prime minister was assassinated. Some people saying the explosion in the port of Beirut. My little sister, she was crying very hard because she was alone in, her, uh, in the kitchen. I will never forget this day. The water was for free. We used to come and take water from here. Bottles everywhere. The pipes completely destroyed. just came to this local shop to buy some water. I will see if I can talk to the owner of the shop or that lady. She looks like she's the daughter of the owner. The port is just here, so something must have happened. My name is Leah Saliba. I used to live in Dubai and I came to Beirut after the explosion. As you can see, my father has a market really affected by the explosion. So essentially the owner of the shop, it's not that he didn't want to be on camera. The experience was so traumatic for him that he couldn't talk to the camera. No funds were actually given to help my father to get back on his feet. So I raised a GoFundMe and I could have raised around 9K so I can come here and help my father to rebuild. Everything was shattered. Whatever products we had, they were like gone. No one came to give you any help. Did you have any insurance? They couldn't say if it was a, a natural disaster. No insurance covered anything. Was somebody here during the explosion, like actually working yes, in the shop? Yes, my brother. And my father was at home, so we lived behind. Nothing happened to your brother? Nothing. Good. Like even if though you he can, was sitting it, here. Even though you have glass and my brother luckily he got away with it. If you would see the place and if you see the houses, you would you would say like no one would come out alive, you know? So after the first sound yeah, of the everyone explosion, like your brother and your yes. father realized you something know, was going on, you so you know, left. They lived the war, so they know the sound when it's like a bad sound. So they knew immediately that there's something happening and they ran outside. So they reacted immediately? Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, if they stay maybe for another five, ten minutes, they were everyone were gone. How much time it took for this business to come back to operation? Well, you can say till now we're still suffering from whatever happened. Not only physically, I'm saying uh, morally, economically, and everything else that happened after the explosion. This is why I came back to help my parents because I could have lost them in seconds. Do you still plan to go back to Dubai at some point? Maybe at stay? some point, yeah. But when I make sure everything is fine. How do you see the future for you or? For in Lebanon, I don't see any hope, you know, but I can help them even though being here or being outside I can help them financially or morally, but to tell you that Lebanon will become a better country I don't think so. For the new generation people study. I think it needs like 10 or 20 generations to come to change, you know, it's gonna take a lot of time, but in our days or in my 
children days, no, it's not going to happen. And I guess it's also very difficult for the shop to of live course. with the economic situation, of course. inflation. Every day, yeah, every day there's prices changing and uh, even though people or any one of us, they're losing everyday money, you know? So it's a disaster until everything it gets uh, to a better place. I think it's going to take a lot of time. Just behind me, there was another lady. She didn't want to be on camera, but she told me she lost everything, everything during the explosion and in the recent years because of the banking system freezing all her money and at the end she said Lebanon is the worst country. I'm sure if something like that happens to anyone you could say the same thing right like an explosion financial problems but like crazy hyperinflation they're still fighting but obviously it's hard sometimes right when you face this reality. It might look like a lot of places have been renovated or in the process. We literally made a turn. I don't even know if somebody's living here. To me, this looks like an abandoned place. Lebanon still struggling to come back. The people still fighting to come back, to have kind of a normal life. People in the interviews told me, we don't think anymore, we are tired. So we continue, we go on. So we're still walking near the port. Try to speak with more people on the street. We asked one of these men on the street, he was with his three kids during the explosion day. They were wounded. He was not in the mood to remember. Boom. Uber or any company, they didn't change the prices yet. The price is never the real price. When you come here to Lebanon, you will have a price in the morning and price at night. It's not gonna be that price. The driver will tell you how much you need to pay. I will text him and tell him like I will pay you. Becoming normal because they are not updating the prices. And you know like he already paying 25% for the app as a commission. So what has uh, left for him. My name is Siham. I'm pure Lebanese. My shop is in this area with my husband and brother. We work here. We have price in the morning and price in the afternoon. You can see easily that the shop is empty. Our shop wasn't like that. When you... did this start like to be more empty? Like in 2020? <laughs> After the bomb, we had our shop all ruined from the explosion. And we didn't find anybody to help us. When they say the NGU, the army, they are big liars. Nobody, the government didn't Nobody. help you. Government, they came five times. And five times, for the five times, they wanted papers, uh, figures, papers, pictures, papers. And all it's with money, huh? You make photocopies or do pictures, photo, uh, make they, they the copy. Evidence. Yeah, mm -hmm. all with the money. So for five times, I'm, I, they, I gave them the papers and the pictures and everything, and uh, and my husband identity cards, photocopy, everything but nothing happened. I was very injured, very, very injured. So where were you during the explosion? This was uh, at my ho uh, at our home. On the, to on the top floor, on the third floor? Third floor, third yeah. Floor. And I was injured there and I would, the, the explosion was at six past seven. Six, past six seven. seven. And I reached the hospital at midnight, half past 11. Oh no, it's the genetic, it has uh, effects on your... Uh, no, people. no, my camera is good. We okay. Can, we can keep talking. The generator stopped, now he will again do it. This is also important to say that it's common as well. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> you know how much I pay for the generator per month? $700. $700 per month? Yes. Because you only it's have limited electricity. No electricity. No electricity at all. So the government now they has... start, since one week or 10 days, they started to give us two hours or four hours. You know why? Because they increased the price of the electricity. So they are giving for that to get, to, to get money. And they give you two hours and four hours, but they, but they write it more. So I want to take you back, if, if you don't mind, to, to the day of the explosion. You mentioned that you were here on the third floor at home. Yes and it took a long time for you to reach the hospital and all that, but maybe can you describe the moment? Like, do you remember exactly what were you doing? I was taking my dresses off 
to get to, to the toilet because it was very hot. I uh, thought to take a shower and come down again to the to the shop. And that time happened the uh, explosion. A small pieces of uh, glasses entered in my body. And uh, I kept around one year when I was taking baths, always I feel glasses coming out of my body. So I thought it was only our area that the bomb happened. We didn't know be be for the first that it was the poor, the explosion. We thought something happened or Israel bombed the electricity building. We started to think like that. You so I was, it was like an attack. Yes, it was an attack of Israel because we heard the airplanes going, coming around. So I told my husband that I'm going to the hospital and he told me, let me come with you. And he walks with the bar because of the bank. I don't know where I'm going. Let me go down and see. And all the building was blocked and I was the only one that injured. So you managed to walk by yourself? I was, I don't know, maybe something. Uh, Maybe something happened, a miracle. So I went a little bit further. I found an uh, ambulance of uh, Red Cross and he told me, please, please don't. Can you go down? Because that man is going to die if we don't take. I told him, okay, okay, it's good, take him. I had an old man, I'm all bloody. He told me, let me take you to the hospital. And he took me to the hospital, but first hospital was damaged. All the people, injured people, they were outside on the street, on the street. The nurses, they were curing them. And I, to, I asked him, I'm injured, I can't enter. They told me, we have nothing to do to you. Try your, try to another hospital. You were like a bleeding. Uh, the blo like bleeding, bleeding. So we went to another hospital. The policemen, they, they do it like this. The hospital is closed, we cannot accept anybody. So he took me another hospital and sitting for two hours in a wheelchair and nobody asking and nobody seeing all the ground and blood. 10 o'clock, the responsible of the hospital, she was a lady, she told me, all the people, they are shouting. You are not shouting. Do you have something? You are... Uh, you are making nervous breakdown. I told it, I told her, no, I'm okay, but the please take care of me. She told me, ask a taxi to take you to another hospital because we don't have the AIDS. We don't have stitches. We have nothing. We run out of everything. I told her how I'm going to ask a taxi. No money, no cellular, nothing. How I'm going to ask? I don't have money, how am I going to pay? She told me I will pay him. Then I remembered that we uh, we have a friend. So I gave her the number. She called him and came to the hospital. And when he saw my case, he told me, you are a strong iron woman. How many hours passed? From six till half past 11. So he was driving and he was always looking at me. Are you alive? And he used to have a bottle of water. He used to throw on me water every time so that... Uh, wake up. Wake up. Stay I went, with me. Yeah, stay with me. To reach to the hospital. When we reached there, security of the hospital, they are doing like this. The hospital is closed. One more time. Yeah. This is the finish of my life. Now please, put me out of your car. Let me die. You literally told them Please let me die in that moment. Yeah. No hospital where he's going to take me. And if I die in his car, they will blame him. I told him, please Ernest, put me out of your car. Let me die out. He told me, no, I'm not going to, the, to, to you to die. Now I know a uh, doctor here. Let me go and speak to the doctor. The security person that he was doing like this, he told me, madam, madam, come on, come on, come on. She, he brought a wheelchair. No, you are a good person. You, uh, you have uh, good uh, people, they know you. Let me take you to the hospital. If he didn't see the doctors up, I mean, maybe I could die there. The doctor finished. He told me, we don't have place, space to, to keep you here. You must go to your house and come again in the morning so that we will continue. I don't have a house. Damaged, no bed, no chair, nothing. He told me, do you want me to take you to my house? 
I told him, no, my husband is waiting for me. And I came and stay here. Now they say, no, it was an accident. It was an accident. It was very difficult. And again, second day, he came, the same person, he came and took me to the hospital to continue. Because I have these two fingers, they were not working. The people used to ask to my husband, he used to say, I don't know if she's alive or died. When I came, I said, wow, you're alive. Nobody expected no. this at all. After six, seven hours, I came half past two after midnight. And I was aching a lot. No medicines. They didn't give you medicine because no, you lost nothing. Nothing. All the medicines are finished. Antibiotic we didn't find. And it was very necessary for me to take antibiotic because I have diabetes. You see, this eye is different than this eye. This is high and this is down. All this side is injured. I start from here, coming here, going up there, coming back here, and going here. But you feel it or it's more like a paralyzed or... Yes. At the beginning, I, I felt it was as if it's paralyzed. They stitch it without anesthesia. They don't have. And, and the doctor... you tolerate it, all that pain. And the doctor told me, can you resist more than this. I told him, doctor, don't be afraid. If I will die, I will die. If I will resist, I will resist. So I told him, can you give me a towel, very clean towel, so that I can uh, scratch on it and put in my mouth for and- the pain, to for the, the pain. Yes, and they started to stitch without anesthesia. And when they reached here, they left this for the, for the end, because here there's very strong bone. I heard, I'm, I'm hearing all the, the, the things that the doctor was speaking. Uh, he told the, the, the nurse, uh, stitch the, uh, the uh, places that they are very sensitive, where there is nerves and veins. Uh, don't leave this for the end. I didn't know why he is telling like that. Then I discovered that because they don't have enough stitches, so they clip it here. No stitches. So I learned things and it was very, very big adventure. And all the media, when they came, they used to ask me, uh, what is your opinion of the government? I, I used to tell them, please don't say the word government. And uh, working in the shop, you, need, you, you see how we are uh, become very sensitive, trauma, trauma. sensitive sensitive with the, all the noises with all the noises after what happened obviously yes of course uh, i stayed one month not sleeping because every time i'm uh, waiting that it's going to happen again it's going to happen again that because was one month after after the explosion, the explosion yeah and when it is uh, dark no electricity i cannot stay even till today yeah i don't like dark because it was dark for seven days. A lot of thieves. Because all the houses, they are open, no doors. People were stealing from your shop. No, not my, not my shop. This area nobody stealed. Because me and my husband were sitting 24, over 24 in front of my shop. Because you were here. But if you were not here? Oh, they would clean it. Oh yeah? Yes, of course. So people were taking advantage of such a yes, terrible situation? Yes, such a terrible situation. My personality changed, really. I'm not the same person that I was before. After 60 days, there came a telephone to my cellular. Uh, speaking a lady. She told me, hello, you are Siham? Yes, we are speaking from the hospital of Meshri. Okay, please. Send me your identity card that you were cured here. If you don't send your identity card, the Minister of Health, they will send you and you are obliged to pay all the expenses. She gave me her number. So I took the picture and sent to her the photograph of my identity card. I did explode the, 
the poor? How I'm going to pay? I was in, injured and I well, was paid. They Everything. Were literally asking you for money for, because of your treatment. Yes. Wow, this is very intense story, and I can't believe you went through all that and you're still here. Iron Lebanese woman. It's truly the best thing they can say because you are, right? It's America. very difficult, you know. It's easy to speak, but to pass through that. It's very difficult. And now I have my husband. Health is not good because of the economics, because of the money. He always sta stays around in front of the television and he wanted to hear that something happened and we're going to get our money. But I don't believe. The banking system collapsed in 2019. They froze all the deposits. So essentially people lost the money. They stole the money. Money doesn't exist. But I want to, I, did, I don't want to say this to my husband. Let him stay with hope that someday he's going to get. Maybe it will happen a miracle. Somebody will come in heaven and make a miracle to the bank and we're going to get our money. You know, it's very difficult. When you are old, you have uh, old uh, age, it's very difficult to you to start again. But when you are uh, young, around 20, 30, 40, we had uh, civil war in Lebanon and we used to live our life normally. But this time, it's very difficult. And it's very different. These things that is happening in Lebanon you're saying that in Argentina happened? No. Not in this system. Not in this way. It also happened in Greece, but not in this system. During one year, they, they started to go now. The best hotels in Greece and the best restaurant is in Greece. And people that they used to work in Lebanon, they're going to Greece, Cyprus, they're opening restaurants and hotels and working but here in lebanon we are from the explosion of uh, poor for august till now we're going and back and back and back you mentioned that you have diabetes as well are you able to get your medicine today? no habibi it's very difficult very difficult very difficult we're getting because the less price of medicine the last price of medicine, one minute. Sorry, yep. sorry, sorry. Most Habibi, please, Matan Sajibli, Dawal Madi. Okay? Hadrin, bye. Before you came, I phoned him. I asked, this is uh, a medicine for the stomach. I asked him, he told me 365. Now he is telling me uh, 465. How do you see the future for you? Future? No future. I don't think of future because I live only for this time. Especially in Lebanon, we don't have future. You don't know. From five minutes down, you see from the uh, medicine. If I'm not working, how, how I'm going to pay? This is the least test price for this. The others, they are one million, two million, one million seven hundred. Because every time they say, Inshallah, tomorrow will be better. Inshallah, next year will be better. It's coming worse and worse. So no future. No yeah. hope, no future. So thank you very much really, you, you, for your time. You're an incredible woman. Like uh, you're really you. like uh, the Aaron, the Aaron woman. That was the nickname. You. It's just incredible. Like everything you went through, and you're still here, sitting here, working all day and with that strength. So Thank I think uh, people should be very proud of somebody like you. Everyone is now going to a nightclub, everyone is drinking, everyone is having fun. And we have this lady suffering like crazy on my left hand side. I really want to thank you so much for watching. See you in the next episode.